Good morning, Year 2. We are going to do our maths lesson now. So, first thing I would like you to do is write today's date and today's skill into your books, please. So, today's date is Tuesday, the 12th of January, 2021, and today's skill is make a raise using manipulative. So, I'd like you to pause the video and, and write this into your book, and when you've written it, can you please unpause the rest of the lesson? Okay, well done. So, today then, before we start our lesson, we are going to recap. I want you to have a little look at these number sentences and images on the screen, and I want you to think which is the odd one out of the four options and why. So, pause the video and have a little think. Okay, well done if you said this one. So, this one is the odd one out because there are six groups of two and not um, six groups of three. So, we have got 12 socks there. And I want you to have a think then. What would the answer be to six times three? And you can use the Numicon that's on the screen as well to help you count the answer to six times three. And I would like you to write six times three equals into your book and write the answer at the end of it, please. Okay. If you need some more time to do that, just pause the video. If not, let's, let's start our lesson. So, today we're going to be making arrays using counters. So first of all, then we need to learn what an array is. So, an array is a representation of a multiplication number sentence, and it's made by arranging a set of objects, so for example, your counters, into rows and columns. Each row must contain the same number of objects as the other rows, they need to be equal. Each column must also contain the same number of objects as the other columns. And arrays are really useful and they're going to help us solve our multiplication number sentences and we're going to be doing those this week. So have a look at this example first then. And I want you to think, first of all, how many rows and how many columns are there? So the rows go along, so in this row there is four, and the columns go down. So in this column there is two, there are two dots. And once you've worked that out, I want you to have a think what the multiplication number sentence for this array could be. So, knowing how many rows and how many columns is, um, for this, this array is going to really help you. And I'd like you to have a go, maybe write it in your book if you want to as well. But first of all, just have a think. Okay, pause the video if you need more time. Okay, so the answer then is 2 times 4 equals 8 and 4 times 2 equals 8. So this array represents these number sentences and we're going to have a look at why it can be both and we're going to touch on that and then look at that in more detail towards the end of the week as well. So, for this array then, we have four groups with two in each group. So 1, 2, 3, 4 which gives us the multiplication number sentence of 4 times 2 equals 8. We also have two groups with 4 in, so 1, 2, 2 groups with 4 equals 8. And the answer is 8 because there are 8 dots in total. So if we count then, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so that gives us our total. So let's have a look then at how we can use arrays to solve multiplication number sentences. So you have an array here for 4 times 5, and I would like you to solve, use the array to solve that number sentence. So first of all, let's count together then. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So there are 4 rows and 5 columns. We know they're equal, there's the same number of dots in each row, and there's the same number of dots in each column. And when we've counted all of those dots and added, uh, added them all together, so we've counted them up, we have got 20. So the answer then, for 4 times 5, 4 lots of 5 is 20. Okay, so Branch was having a go, drawing an array for 3 lots of 10, so 3 times 10. But he's got in a bit of a muddle. And I want you to have a look at his array now, and I want you to think, what has he done wrong? How does this array look different to the array we've looked at previously? So pause the video and just have a really close look at it and think, how many ways can we spot, how many, um, what, how many mistakes has he made when drawing this array? So pause the video, please. Okay, so... His array then isn't as neat as the other array, so he's got different amounts of dots in the rows, he's got different amount of dots in the columns, so they are not in nice equal, nice equal columns and rows. Okay. 
okay. We've also got some dots that are overlapping as well here, so that might be, make it really difficult to count as well. So when we try and count that up, we might get the wrong answer because it's not clear to see. So when, it's, when we draw our arrays or make them using our counters, it's really important that we use neat, clear columns and rows and we draw our dots a size that we can see really clearly too. Because when we come to draw it, if it's really, really small, we might miss that dot and not count it. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now then, in your book I'd like you to write 3 times 10 equals, and I would like you to have a go, using that information, drawing your own. So how many rows, how many columns will you need for 3 lots of 10? And I want you to have a go drawing that now. So pause the video and draw that into your, um, your book now. Or you could also use your um, printed counters to make that array if that's easier as well. Okay, so let's have a look then. So one of the other trolls has tried to create an array for 3 times 10. And I want you to have a look at your array that you've drawn for 3 times 10. And have a look at hers. And I want you to tell me, is she right? And if she isn't, what has she done wrong? So how many rows and how many columns are there in her array? Okay. So, her array is wrong because there are two groups of 10 and not three groups of 10. So when we have three times 10, we need to have three groups. Her number sentence for this array would be two times 10 equals 20. So I would like you then to have a look at your array and look at hers. Is yours right? So let's correct hers. So we've got three lots of 10 now, and I want you to have a look at your array, and have you got that right? Have you got the same array that's on the screen now? And give yourself a big tick if you have, well done. Okay, so let's have a look then at these images. And I want you to think, are they still arrays? Because they all look very different to the arrays we've seen so far. So just pause the video and have a look at each array, and I want you to think, are they still arrays? Okay, well done. Yes, they are still arrays, so they are still ordered in rows and columns, and we can still use them to solve multiplication number sentences. So have a look at the, at the um, different arrays, and I want you to think, what multiplication number sentence could we write for each array? And you could have a go writing them that, those down as well. So if we have a look at the first one, for example, we've got three rows and three columns. So we've got three times three, and three times three equals nine. So pause the video and have a look at each of the other images as well now please okay so on to our guided practice now then so the first thing I would like you to do is I would like you to write six times two on a piece of paper and I would like you to use your printed counters or anything else that you've decided to use and I would like you to create your array um, for six times two underneath your number sentence and you need to think very carefully about how many columns and how many rows your array will have Look at the numbers in the number sentence really, really carefully. And once you have um, completed your array and made your array, I'd like you to count them and write the answer at the end of the number sentence. So you can write that on your, your piece of paper. Okay, once you've done that, I'd like you to check your array and check your answer, because it's really important that we don't just move on, we make sure that we check our maths work as well. So let's have a look then where you write. Have a look here. So we have got, Six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and two going across. And here we have got two going down and six going across. So have a look at your array and check your answer, please, and give yourself a tick if you're right. Okay, on to the next guided practice, then we're going to do another one now then. So the first thing I would like you to do is I would like you to write six times five on a piece of paper. And exactly the same as we've done before, I would like you to create your array underneath the number sentence for um, three times five. And I would like you to make your array now underneath and pause the video to give yourself a bit of time to do that, please. Okay, so hopefully you thought really carefully about how many, array, uh, how many um, rows and columns you have in your array. And I would like you to count all of the counters that you have in total. And I'd like you to write your answer at the end of the number sentence now that you have written at the top. Once you have written your answer, I would like you to check your array and your answer. So once again, it's really important that we check. And then pause the video if you're not ready. But if you are, have a little look at the answer down here. And this is what your arrays should look like. So you should have one of these made out of your counties. So we've got three going along here. Oh, there's one else. There we go. Three going along and five going down. And we've got five going along and three going down. 
So it could look like either of those. Okay, so your independent practice then. You are going to solve the questions provided on your sheet by using the printed counters to create arrays. So you need to write down the number sentence one at a time and then make your array underneath. And your questions are going to be on the next slide. So I'd like you to follow these steps to success. And remember, you can always come back to this um, slide if you are um, finding it tricky or not sure what your next step will be. So... The first step then, you need to write the multiplication number sentence into your catch-up book. And to look carefully at the numbers in the multiplication number sentence to see how many rows and columns your array will have. And use your printed counters or the other objects if you've chosen to use other objects to make your array. You then need to count the counters, all of the counters in your array to find the total and write that at the end of your number sentence. And then finally check your array and answer. And then... As a little challenge, once you've completed your array, I would like you to have a look at this number sent this uh, sorry the sentence stem, and I would like you to fill in the missing gaps. So, for example, there are something groups with something in each group. There are something all together. So, think about how many groups you have, how many are in each group, and how many there are all together by looking at your array. So this is where you need to pause the video then for your questions. So you need to choose your challenge, whether you're doing cool, mild, spicy or hot. So think about how confident you are making the arrays. And remember, this is the first lesson that we've done um, on making arrays. So have a go. And then throughout the week, you might try and challenge yourself more and do the, a, di a different challenge. So here is a waggle. So waggle means um, what a good one looks like. And I have got my number sentence. I've done three times five. And I have made my array underneath, and then I've written the answer at the end. I've also checked my answer as well. Okay, so that's exactly what yours should look like with your printed um, counters underneath your number sentence. Okay, so pause the video now and complete your independent, uh, independent practice, please. Okay, well done for completing your independent practice. Now it is time to challenge ourselves. So your challenge for today is... True or false, if array A shows 6, array B shows 12. So I want you to pause the video and write your answer now. So think about, reason, think about your reasoning language that you use. And I want you to say, is this statement true or false? So pause the video. Okay, so in A then we have got 6 and it says array B shows 12. So if we counted B, we will see that we have got 12 in B because B is double A. So we have got 6 in A, 12 in B because it is double. So we've got double the amount of counters in B. Well done. Okay, so our final thought for today then. Well done, you've been super this maths lesson. And these four trolls were planting their vegetables. They plant each type of vegetable in rows. They're expla explaining how they are going to plant their vegetables below. So the first troll says, I'm planting four rows of five. The next one says, I'm planting five rows of four. The next troll says, I'm planting four rows of four. And the last troll says, I'm planting two rows of ten. And for your final thought today, I want you to use your printed counters to calculate the total vegetables planted by each farmer troll and in order to find the odd one out. So which troll is planting the vegetables in a different, so a different number, a different total to the others? So which one is the odd one out? Pause the video and use your counters to solve this now, please. Okay, so let's have a look at the answer then. Which troll was the odd one out? So we've got troll one. Troll one, four times five equals 20. Troll two, five times four equals 20. Troll three, four times four equals 16. So you might have spotted that already then. And last troll is two times 10 equals 20. So well done if you said troll three was the odd one out because Four times four equals 16. The rest of the trolls are planting 20 vegetables and troll three is planting 16 vegetables. So she is the odd one out. Well done from today's maths lesson. Bye-bye.